ready to go fishing. So I've spotted this beaver hut to try. Uh, I'm in about 14 feet off the base of the hut. Don't want to fish right at the hut because I don't really want all the small stuff hanging around it. But hopefully uh, there's some bigger fish hanging around uh, in the deeper water just off of it. And we'll uh, see if we can't get some of them. Fish on. bass that just got off. Got another one uh, nibbling here. Just gonna let him take the hook and then set it. Oh, nice bass. Nice bass. Drop a good little fight too. It's one thing about bass, they're nice and feisty and uh, can be a lot of fun. Let's see if we can do that again. Definitely seems to be a promising spot. Of course, by the beaver hut there's minnows. Where there's minnows, there's fish. And sometimes, some very nice fish. Just had one interested, but you let go. Sometimes when you're around the beaver hut, you have to really watch out. There's a lot of uh, logs, sticks to get tangled up in. Bass will go straight for them and try and wrap your line around. You really have to try and control them a lot. Oh, there's another one. Another nice bass. This one isn't quite as big and he's hooked pretty easily so we can just let him go. Stay tuned for more fish tomogamy, but first we'd like to thank this episode's sponsors. Located in the south arm of Lake Tomogamy, Tamar provides accommodations for fishing and family gatherings of all sizes. Enjoy cottages on an island paradise with bountiful trout fishing and cross lake close by or explore all of the lake on one of Tamar's houseboats. Looking for a vacation where you can experience the rugged beauty of nature while still enjoying all the comforts of home? Make the most of summer vacation by visiting Loon Lodge, the perfect balance of a rustic camping experience with comfortable lodgings. So beautiful and peaceful out here, the birds are calling in the trees, a couple chickadees. So far, the bass have been great. Wasn't really sure what to expect today with the wind being from the north, but I can't complain when every time I put down my line, I get to fish within a couple minutes. It's a little bit more sunlight, I think I could probably see them hitting my line. We've drifted in a little a little closer to shore, I can make out uh, logs on the bottom. Can't quite see the fish yet. But it is a little, uh, little darker today, a little more overcast. Feels nice. Oh yeah! Quite as big as I'd like, and just got the hook in too far, so away he goes. Took my worm again though, so I'll have to restring on a worm. I just bring lots of worms with me when I go bass fishing. You know, I hate to skimp on a worm and not be able to attract them in. If 
they're hitting really good, you can cut them in half. And if you're just with the kids, you want to make sure the kids can uh, catch the fish, you know, cut them small so that when they get a bite, they tend to get excited and want to set the hook right away, then you'll, uh, they'll, they'll still be able to catch the fish. You know, these little bass, they just keep coming. Got another one already. You just put the worm down and there they are. Oh, now this one's a little bigger. And this one, we might just call supper too. This half worm catches half a fish. This one uh, is definitely not going to win me any prizes this week. But you know, the nice thing about seeing a fish that size is it means they're reproducing in the lake. And uh, we definitely want to do our best to protect them, let them go so they can grow up and uh, become good either spawners or in a couple of years, maybe a nice fish to eat. along the water. Now there's a nice fish. And that, that one was also with half a worm. So no problem cutting down on the amount of worm I'm using. We're still going to get nice fish and I'm not going to run out of worms. Again, not a big bass, but uh, definitely a good size to see. And in he goes. Oh, well, he just got off the hook. That's number two that just got off the hook. And I have a funny feeling maybe the feeding frenzy is uh, starting to slow down. Stop. I've told my friends again and again, don't use your pole to pull on snags. Grab the line and pull on the line itself or you'll break your pole. I watched a friend snap his pole once doing it and it's been in my mind ever since. That being said, I've used this pole over 10 years, brought in that huge pike in episode 2 and I have a little bit of overconfidence in my pole. At this point I think I'm starting to pull a branch off the bottom and I'm using my pole and I'm about to pay the price for my overconfidence. <laughs>